Here we go. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode of Addressing Gettysburg. And uh, today we have uh, something uh, very special for you, we believe. And... um, you might recall over the winter, there was a winter lecture given by a fellow named Jeff Irwin, and it was about everything that we're finding, or they're finding, I should say, um, on Little Round Top as they're doing the rehabilitation um, uh, work. And uh, so I invited Jeff on, and he came on with uh, a, a colleague of his, the parkeologist, as we like to call her, Caitlin Ball. So welcome, Jeff and Caitlin. How are you guys? Hey, good. good morning. Good. Now, let me just switch here. As I was explaining to you before, I'm uh, uh, I'm short someone to work the camera for me, so I'm going to be doing both at the same time. So my apologies to the audience and to you guys as well. So uh, you guys, uh, so Jeff, your title is Cultural Resources Program Manager. Yep. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. The simplest, there's no simple way to put it. <laughs> one, one simple way to put it is to say, okay, on, on, the, on the park, any federal land, you have resources. We tend to divide them into natural resources and cultural resources. Okay. So natural resources think everything's sort of biological, uh, whether it's, it's individual uh, species, endangered species, it's habitat, it's forests, wetlands, et cetera. Like beavers? Yeah. 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 Okay. A beaver. Well, he's a strange, uh, <laughs> strange case of sort of critical overlap between natural and cultural. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he himself is natural. Yes. Uh, cultural resources is essentially uh, everything that is uh, typically considered like a historic property or an archaeological resource. So it's archaeological sites as well as historic buildings. Here at Gettysburg, it's essentially the whole park. You know, everything that we have out there is in some way connected to the cultural landscape, the battlefield, um, or archaeological material. So, uh, cultural resources is, a, is includes archaeology, but it's a broader, broader range too. All right, and then uh, Caitlin, as the parkeologist, what do you have to do? Are you are you like Indiana Jones? You got your fedora and leather coat and whip, and you're out there fighting the bad guys trying to get the bullets out of the ground or every day yeah the whip that's is the most important that is why you got into archaeology right because exactly. you thought it would be like indiana jones that's right and you're sorely disappointed yeah uh, <laughs> i hate to say it i do a lot of paperwork uh-huh. and um digging yeah um, well the digging is the fun part though it isn't is it the yeah. fun part yes but everything has to be ruined with paperwork i've noticed in life yes you know yep yeah, I know. But so, as the archaeologist, I mean, have you been out there digging on Little Round Top? I have. Okay. Um, yes. Um, so, as the park archaeologist, what I do is I monitor, and um, anytime that there is a ground disturbance on park property, I am out there to um, record, document, and um, recover any archaeological information that we can. Um, learn from the project going on. When you uh, when you're out there and you're digging, mm-hmm. I mean, you know you're at a at a historic piece of ground. Yes. So the chances of finding something are pretty good, obviously, right? But Correct. but when you do, when you finally uncover something, and you're the first person to have laid eyes on it since it was placed on the or the ground, mm-hmm. uh, and then eventually becomes underground. What what does that feel like? You know, um, it's it's crazy. Every time you find something, you still get that feeling of, yeah. I'm holding this for the first time in 160 years since a soldier dropped this bullet. Since. Right. Yeah. And why is that such a, why is it, because when, when they unearthed that dire shell, um, yes. <laughs> I was looking at that, of the picture of yes, it there laying on the ground. Right. And I was like, that's so cool. And I, I wasn't even there. I didn't handle it. I didn't, yes. I didn't see it. But just a photograph of it, knowing that it's, you know, just unearthed. Right. And no one has seen or touched that since it was placed in the cannon that fired it, if it was fired. I mean, you know. It was. Um, yeah. And so... W- w- 
why why do we feel that way? It's just an item, right? Right. Like um, if you if you go into the dirt and you you find a rock and you unearth it, like yeah. maybe someone stepped on that rock a long time ago, but we don't right. know. We don't go, oh, somebody might have stepped on that. What's right. the difference? Um. Well, it's it is just an item, but there's also that human connection, and that's what archaeology is all about to me. Um, is it's not just about the objects. It's it's about that connection that we have um, to the items and objects that we use every day um, as as humans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, d- by the way, if you're listening in the audience and the bus noises are annoying you, it's a gorgeous day here in Gettysburg, and we have the door of the studio open, and and we're we're basically in a shed in a parking lot. So <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a studio. <laughs> well, the studio is in a shed. <laughs> it's a garden shed studio. Uh, okay, so then let's let's get talking uh, a little bit about Little Round Top. So as everybody knows, there's a, a rehab uh, project going on, rehabilitation. Uh, I got to take a little tour of it yesterday and we're going to do a video on it next week and um it uh i was very happy to see that um uh, a, a good deal of the plans um or some of the details of the plans have been scrapped that would have like put retaining walls in places that would just be unsightly and you know other types of trails that you'd have to cut through boulders to to get to or, or to use um, so I like that it, it seems that the idea is that we're going to um, make all the rehabbing uh, efforts kind of just whoops my fault there kind of just blend in to the landscape as it is and and there's not a lot of alterations or changes or deletions of some of the social paths. I mean, there are some social paths that I was told are going to be, you know, kind of obscured um, and for good reason. But uh, for the most part, it's basically saying, okay, the the feeling I got was, okay, this is where you all roam and you've made these paths. So we're going to just formalize them uh, in some, like I'm thinking of the one that's going down to the 83rd Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that you used to twist your ankle or or trip over a rock and whack your forehead. Now you can comfortably and safely and easily get down to it and to the 16th Michigan. Um, what other what other things uh, do people have to look forward to that uh, that they're working on that you think are pretty good points? Well, you know, it's funny because I I've only been here at Gettysburg for about six months, right? Right. I uh, only visited Gettysburg in a short visit one time before. I've spent the last six years in California. So when I came here, I had never been to Little Round Top. And I was introduced to that project. It's been in the planning stages for a long time. Uh, But as I was introduced to it, there were even more changes ahead when we realized some of those design elements, as you probably heard, were pretty profound. Right? Yes. Like a lot of fill was going to be brought in. The road was going to be elevated. and Oh, you know, that was another thing. Things he, like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, the bus would have been so high. You can see it from Crawford Avenue. get out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, that was a the, you know, that was um, that was something that surprised me was that because uh, Steve had said Steve Sims, the superintendent, he said that uh, you know there was this one path, and he said you know at first it was going to be that we would put five feet of fill on the road, so the bus would be higher and it would be easier to just kind of like level into a path to get up to the summit. And he goes, but we scrapped that because we realized you'd be able to see it from Crawford Avenue, <laughs> the bus. Yeah. So and that's good. I'm glad about. That the 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 topography isn't changing much. No, we are introducing a little bit of fill. You know, but the idea is basically to preserve that that sort of sacred ground. Yeah, you know where soldiers walked, where soldiers stood, and I think that's that is now our focus. The minimal, so minimal treatment, minimal introduction of new trails or fill or walls or anything like that. But at the same time, accommodating especially uh, visitors and, and creating accessibility up there that will have a nice accessible trail for uh, wheelchairs. So it's going to be, I think it's going to look terrific, but we're being very sensitive to, for example, what are the touchstones? If you get up there and look at that ridge top, what can you look at and think that's original? Mm-hmm. Typically up there, rocks, right? Mm. Uh, the breastworks, the stone walls, those are things that you can immediately gravitate towards and lock in on as, as something that's original. 
you got the monuments, you got trails, you got roads and parking lot, clearly intrusive. So we're trying to make sure that we can honor that that sort of original landscape as much as possible. Yeah, and and it seems to be uh, that's exactly what's happening too. It's like you know I. Uh, Steve said, he goes, I'd be, when we do the video next week, he goes, I'd be interested to hear as we're walking along, you know, things that you notice that are different and stuff. And I was like, I go, you know, there, there are things that are different, but they're not drastically different. To, in other words, I think there will be so much time between when people last visited Little Round Top to when it reopens and they can first visit it that they'll kind of forget what it looked like because it's not that much different. I mean, maybe the most drastic thing I think would be the bus parking um, and and some of the areas to uh, congregate. You know, um, they're, but they're formalized. It's, I know one thing early on was uh, people were afraid that they were going to put like observation decks on the summit of Little Round Top because some some proposal had gotten out that that showed those and um, they're not doing that thank God but it, but basically in the areas where those decks I think were proposed to go is where they're going to just formalize a congregation area because it seems that and a congregation area isn't the word that Steve used yesterday do you know the word I'm looking for <laughs> a set, uh, like gathering area gathering area something gathering like that area, yeah something like that yeah. The same thing um, but uh, it, it, they they I think they were areas where people naturally went off the path anyway and stood and you know and you know guides would take their groups and there was space there so they would tell them to get off the path and, and hang out there so that's good that they're they're kind of it's it's almost like it's a mix between you know what is good for or to protect against erosion and to protect the historical integrity of the place but also kind of in a way honor what visitors have been naturally doing you know Social all trails. The, the social trails, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think it's good. I think people are going to like it. And I think all the worry and nail biting uh, that has been going on is kind of uh, moot because it really is not anything drastic. And I think people are going to be really happy with it when they finally open up again. Yeah, and I think it's in a, in a sense, it's, it's nothing different than what's occurred since right after the battle, right? right? And those monuments were erected. And I found recently this description of a was it the 50th anniversary of the battle this massive fireworks show that was put on atop little round top no kidding and you know so that kind of attention and that kind of uh, draw visitor draw to the hilltop has been there since the battle but in my mind there's like this fine line between creating what is is sort of like an overlook or a, a scenic vista uh -huh. and and standing in sacred you know, battlefield, because you want to do that. You want to go out to these these areas in the battlefield and stand there and feel like you are standing on the same ground in the same context, right? And, but when you're standing on a, a sort of a prepared overlook, like you're on the Blue Ridge Parkway or something, that's different. That's a yes. different feeling. Yes, right? yes. You have to accommodate that. So, it's just, you know, it's just a fine line. Yeah, and I think they're doing a good job with it. So, And, and it seems that there is uh, a willingness and ability by the park service to say, you know what? Yeah, this is what we have on paper, but I don't think that's going to work. Scratch that part. Let's just do this. And that is something I don't think people are very used to hearing from the federal government is there's <laughs> flexibility there. So that's good. I think that's really good. All right. So let's get into some of the stuff that you guys have found there. And for those of you watching on the video, uh, this is the first time I've ever tried to do this where we mirror something. So what we're going to do is I got to switch the view there. Okay, there we go. The screen capture. And now here we are. All right. So this this is uh, this is basically the slideshow that you did at your lecture, right? Yeah, modified a little bit. Okay, so um, but let's let's go through it from the very beginning here because maybe people are not sure exactly what the definition of archaeology is. So go ahead, tell us what that is. Well, you know, the I think one thing to emphasize is when Caitlin was talking a minute ago about. Uh, that feeling that you get if you if you uncover something. And yesterday we <laughs> we did excavate a a mini ball that was dropped, and um, based on where it was located, that's when you get that feeling. Yeah. Like if you find it and it's somewhere it's not supposed to be, and you think there's no way this is the original place where this artifact was deposited. It's been kicked around or was picked up and read, you know, lost somewhere, whatever, carried somewhere. You don't necessarily get that feeling, but when you get that that impression that yes this is exactly where it was dropped or left and forgotten 
uh, that's kind of when you get that feeling and that's that's what that definition really emphasizes is just uh, so the study of ancient and vegans. recent human past but this yeah the study so a lot of people confuse archaeology with paleontology so the point of that definition is to emphasize that it's <laughs> human, hi- human. Yes, yeah. human history <laughs> and artifacts uh not fossils or or whatever but and we don't have typically in archaeology we don't have a lot of written record to go on so we're focusing on those those material remains or artifacts and you kind of you're kind of like um would it be fair to say you're kind of like a like a, a CSI uh, agent detective kind of when you yeah. when you come upon maybe not so much here although I'm sure here too but when you go to some other ty- type of site that wasn't known about or expected and a construction company unearthed something and then you start to unearth and then you see everything as it is and then you kind of piece together but well, what is this there's somebody's house or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. and you you can you can get ideas uh, about their way of life and their lifestyle uh, from that is that Correct. fair and accurate yeah yeah mm-hmm. okay so. all right and so let's move on here to the next thing so archaeology at Gettysburg farmstead archaeology uh, so we're talking let's see here uh, well let's go into this one here for a bit here what are we looking at in these pictures um, so these two pictures are some projects that we have done over the past couple of years on the left there you will see um, a survey that was done at Culp's Run on the Culp Farmstead. Um, and it was horrible, 100 plus degree heat, with <laughs> terrible humidity. <laughs> um, no shade. Two summers ago, no shade, the middle of a field. And um, it was right by that old run. They had re- they're currently still finishing up that project of rehabilitating the Culp's Run. Um, that little stream restoration project that was going on. So this happened, um, this was a compliance project that had happened prior to them doing that. They needed um, just to be sure that they wouldn't damage any archeological resources, which is where I came in and um, had a team out there and we had dug, um, I wanna say close to 160 shovel test pits, which are um, 50 centimeters deep and we just dig a hole and we will record um, any artifacts that we find. We place them on a grid strategically um, with our archaeological survey and then we just record the soil type, the texture, any artifacts that we find, um, the depth and we do that across the entire site just to get an idea of what may or may not be there. Okay. And yeah. Now, so looking at this picture on the right here. Right. So this is actually a different site. Oh. This is from um, the Benner Farm. Okay. The Benner House. Um, and this was in the backyard. So actually what had happened is they are doing a historical restoration project of um, that house. And the trailer that they were using as their staging area for the project that the um, preservation folks are are working out of um they had noticed that that very top um stone in the picture next to the the blue bucket yeah um they had it, noticed, the one in the hole yes the uh-huh. one in the hole um they had noticed that that rock was poking out of the ground and they thought hmm this might be something archaeological so they called me out and i had dug a um 10 meter trench um and we unearthed that is the corner of a um building that used to be on that property which may have been the original um benner house before while they were building the main house Ah, Um, or an outbuilding like a um, summer kitchen Mm -hmm. or um, there was also a schoolhouse on that property so interesting so so we're looking at the foundation we are looking at the foundation so the stones um, so about the corner of the building would be exactly where that bucket is okay Um, would have been the corner and then you see all those roots that would have been the inside floor Ah. and um, the artifacts that I had excavated out um, and then we did also run a parallel line to extend the corner of um, the corner of that house so I went along the entire wall actually so we could measure the um, 
the dimensions of that building. But the artifacts that we found inside the house were um, ceramics, glass, kitchen um, related household domestic artifacts. And then outside as well, we found um, artifacts and in a, a matrix, a soil matrix of what looks like it had been burnt and discarded. So okay. we found some butchered bone um, and a few other. So uh, w- w- how patient do you have to be to remove all that dirt so, and, and just have it look so perfect? <laughs> <laughs> so that actually, um, where you see that black plastic tarp, I probably uh-huh. spent around... 40 hours lying on that black tarp on my stomach, um, digging out with a trowel, scraping the surface, you know, centimeter wow. by centimeter. Right, because you can't um, just go digging in. Right. right? In a, you don't know what's a, down there. In a, in a uh, project like this, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on other projects, possibly, but this took a lot of patient work because we wanted to keep all of the foundation stones exactly how they were. And in doing so, we actually came across a doorway where the, um, the original the door frame with the hinge of a door was still in um, the foundation wall. Wow. So if you had used a shovel to excavate that site, you would have destroyed the context in that situation. So this is going to sound kind of like a stupid question, but the, the, w- when would you date this? Um. So that really depends on what the we look at the artifacts, we take a look at the historical records, if there are any, and preliminarily based on the artifacts that I had um, recovered I would say 1830s to 1850s is what I'm thinking right now Um, we will once we when it was built or when it was no longer being used when it was in use okay so when they um, were using those artifacts such as the cups the plates Um, right okay so that is where I'm getting those dates from so pre-civil war but that's right. still, in in the grand scheme of things, this is where I'm going with this, mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very long time. No. Yet it seems to be under quite amount, uh, quite a good amount of uh, soil. Yeah. So, I mean, I know there's there could be a million and a half reasons why something that was not placed there so long ago is several inches under dirt. Right. But typically... Mm-hmm. What is it that makes, you know, when we find stuff on the battlefield here now, granted, a lot of stuff was churned by farmers over the years. And so mm-hmm. that probably throws things off. Right. But in places where that wasn't the case. Right. Like the backyard. Like the backyard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, so, yeah. Um, so when they did take the structure down, uh, probably after they had built the house, this, the backyard was definitely um, graded over at one point and probably fill was put in. Um, just With to, pudding. <laughs> they filled it with pudding. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. Um, it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. What did you say? Filled. Filled in. They they put. Oh, oh f- fill they put in. fill in. Okay. Right. Fill was put in, is what you said. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, I'm sorry. I don't mind pudding. It's old man hearing, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pudding's delicious. Yeah. Hey, I won't argue with that. Um, <laughs> but they would have covered it up with fill at some point. Sure. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, so these are some of the items that you found there or, um, or, or yeah, some in a of this farm. Is, is, yes. So yeah. these are all objects from farmsteads um, around the battlefield. Yeah, but those plates are beautiful. The yeah. work. Yeah. Um, so that's, these are some examples of transfer printed and hand painted um, ceramics that were popular in the 19th century yeah. that we find in right. farms. And then, uh, so now we're getting into battlefield, and this battlefield. is really what we want to talk about here. <laughs> battlefield archaeology. Okay, so anything you want to say about these pictures, or should I just move on to the next slide? Um, yeah, so these are some pictures of a um, metal detection survey that we were doing um, in compliance with a trail a restoration project that'll be happening in the near future. So we just go ahead and uh, make sure that once again, nothing will be destroyed by the construction work that'll be happening to um, put these trails. In. And where is this on? Is this Culp's Hill or? No. So this is actually between um, Big Round Top and um, going down slope of Big Round Top to Devil's Den. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. The, the, the one in the upper right is, that's, that's newer. That's an excavation. Oh, yeah. Small excavation that's that, that very recent. 
Uh, uh, same area? No, this is out in sort of McMillan Woods area. Okay. We're, we're trying to assess what's been recorded for a long time as, as surviving rifle pits. Oh. And um, so we're trying to figure out if that's indeed what they are. Okay. You mean just those mounds that we see, the breastworks, or are you talking about these specific? Are, these are literal depressions, depressions. You know, like individual fighting positions. Right. Yeah. And, and are, are you sure they're fighting positions or not, and not graves? Where, or is uh, that these, what you're discovering? Well, these were recorded as rifle pits as, as far back as 1864. Oh, okay. And uh, they do indeed appear to be that. They're associated with a breastwork. They're, Got it. There's a linear breastwork right in front of them. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. All right. And then so uh, so here we're looking at a bayonet and some bullets and things, which I guess we're going to get into more specifically as we go with yeah, these. That's yeah, that's just kind of a mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So a little round top. We all know little round top. So this is the area that we're talking about. Uh, well, this is little round top here. And this, the overlays are what we're going to have when the rehabilitation is over. More or less, yeah. yeah. That's that's an old image. It's changed quite a bit. Yes. Yeah, there's some things on there I could see that Sims told me yesterday they're not doing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, let's just get in here. Now, well, the um, people ask, where is the Texas Trail? Because that uh, dire shell was found on the Texas Trail. Is that correct? Uh, mm. Or near the Texas Trail? Uh, near it. Yeah. I mean, in the vicinity of, I don't think they said specifically yeah. on, but in the area of the Texas Trail. Is that not... It's just a little, mis- little probably southwest of there. Mm. Southwest of there. So the yeah. Texas Trail, I don't know if you could see yeah. my mouse on your screen, ladies and gentlemen, but the Texas Trail is this, right? Yeah. Okay. And it goes down to Warren Avenue. Um, and uh, somewhere in this area is where the shell was found. Yeah. yeah. Right? Maybe a little further. Wait a second. I'm not pointing at the right no. thing. No. The no. Texas Trail is off the... You can't <laughs> see it. It's off the screen. But it's down... No, no, no. What am I talking it's, about? It's up here. Right. Yeah, I was right. right. Yeah. What the hell am I talking about? Yeah. I'm always right. Okay. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> so, and here, here, here's another example of it. It's in this area. Kind of where the Texas troops came up. Is that the idea? Yeah. Of naming it yeah. the Texas Trail. Okay. So that makes sense. Um, all right. So most of the things that you find are ammunition. Correct. Uh, actually, most of what we find is garbage. Oh. <laughs> these are these are the artifacts. So if we're talking about archaeological resources, those are things that were yes. Kept. <laughs> these are the right. the actual artifacts that we are saving. If you want some, if you want some back, just pull the mic okay. towards you. Just pull it wherever you go. Um, okay, so yeah. but, and one of the things that is interesting, and, and Steve Sims said this yesterday, is that uh, there is a large amount of nails being found. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what that that is a that's preliminary data. All of this is preliminary data, but that is basically a tabulation of artifacts that were kept. Most of them battle related, not all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see the largest category is ammunition, but the second largest is nails. Yeah. You go to the next, the next image there. Uh, that's a map showing you the um, distribution at that time. There's probably a lot more data, but you can see the nail concentration down there on the southern end, and that's undoubtedly Oops. related to the old Weikert souvenir stand that was down there. But um, those, importantly, those are cut nails. So they are 19th century nails. Cut nails, they would be those like flat nails that you see that are kind yeah. of square-ish. Yep. Yeah, the next slide actually shows you the uh, kind of a... There you go. Okay. On the upper right there, sort of the, the a diagram showing you the like these. process. As yeah. A, well, the ones on the left are more of a uh, hand wrought. Oh, this right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the other, the other right. right. <laughs> You're talking the whole right. Uh, okay, yeah. So now why would there be so many nails up there? Was uh, there a regiment full of carpenters? Good question. <laughs> well, it's kind of going back to what we were talking about before. Like, uh, so you've got the Weikert souvenir stand. You've got uh, what all these monuments being erected. And that's what those you see in the lower right-hand corner is the dates of those some of those monuments. That's not all of them. But you can see their 1880s, 1890s. Yeah. Um, that's exactly the time period when that type of nail would be used. So you probably have speaker platforms and, and various things being, oh, being built okay. up there. That makes sense. Um, so that that's the nails. Basically, there's a lot of them. They're not meaningless. They're not battle-related. They tell us a little bit, though, about what happened after the battle. 
Yeah, okay. Who knows? They could be related to that big fireworks display. Right, right. But <laughs> I mean, they could. Who knows? Maybe they had to build a platform for the fireworks. So now we're looking at the uh, 44th New York. 44th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 44th. Yeah. Didn't sound right in my head for a second. Um, and this, when you did the um, lecture, this was very interesting to me here. Um, we'll move to this slide. Talk about the different colors of, in the soil. Yeah, that was really cool because the uh, that's Caitlin down there cleaning that the bottom of that trench out on the right, and um, on the left you're looking back towards the monument itself at that trench wall. So they dug that trench because they're they're putting in a, a wall um, to basically stabilize that area, and we're we're having a trail come around the, the monument there. But when they dug that that trench. The fellow who's out there, uh, Steve Brand, who's doing the the metal detecting out there, he had metal detected up there at the trench. I mean, at the monument, and he did pick up a few artifacts. Well, when they dug the trench, he jumped down in there and started metal detecting, and he got some artifacts down there. So you've got artifacts separated by several feet of soil. Doesn't make much sense, right? right. Um, so. We came out there and took a look at it with Steve, and then we decided to excavate a little bit in the bottom of that trench and uh, realized that the bottom of that trench was exposing the original ground surface. That's an A horizon or a top soil that's being exposed down there. That, that uh, organic black soil is the old A horizon. It's been capped by Phil when they put in that uh, monument. Now, why does the color of that tell you that that's the original... Like if I were just digging in the woods somewhere and I, I, I got to a different color the soil, would, would, would like I mean it's got to be more than that, right? That it's just a different color. Well, it's it's that organic content. If you look at that wall right there in the left, yeah, you can see all that rock. All there's clay in there, kind of sterile clay. Um, the the lighter colored stuff. Yeah, all that's just fill material that was thrown on top of the ground to support the the monument. Right. Um, that. A horizon, or it's just a, a typical organic layer that's located at the top of your soil column out here. If we walked out here and, and dug a hole, we would probably find an initial dark organic layer, and then that would transition to uh, clay or a loam that, that has less organic material in it. Because the leaves and twigs right. and stuff right. decompose, and then right. they become the top soil. Right. Okay. So you, you, so this is actually where Caitlin is kneeling in this picture. Yeah. Is is actually where the soldiers stood. Yeah, and the yeah. other signifier there is that large boulder that's uh, in in its original position. Okay, why is that signified? Well, because to Caitlin's left and right, that's all fill. Mm. If you go behind Caitlin there, you get to more exposed large boulders, and they are marking the original surface, and they're basically at the same elevation as that boulder Got that it. you see at the bottom of the trench. Okay. All right, so let's see here. So let's uh, these are some you know typical uh, things that you found, right? I mean, uh, mini balls. Uh, we've all seen these. We've all probably handled them in some way or another. Um, anything you want to say about this? You don't. You don't have to. Yeah, just just uh, an example of some of the um, dropped mini balls that were recovered from a little round out. Yeah, yeah, those are fifty-eight caliber. Mm -hmm. uh, the first three, one's fifty-eight yeah, three rings. Mm -hmm. And, and the second one's 69. 69. 69. Definitely yeah. look bigger. And these are two rings. Gardeners, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a Williams cleaner. The with, cleaner. With the zinc washer attached to the base. And, and for, explain that to people, how that would work. Why do they call it a cleaner? I won't let you explain it, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, originally we, we didn't or from from what we gather from records um we didn't think that these were always shot um but archaeology says otherwise you know this would they would use one of these for as a cleaner and we didn't think they were always shot um until we started digging up um cleaner bullets that were indeed fired so would it would a cleaner bullet be you know every so many rounds in the cartridge box would be a cleaner bullet so that while they're fighting it would just go out and kind of clean is that the idea i don't know if it would yeah, yeah i i'm not sure how many were included in each um package i think there was one or two of them that were 
Yeah. Okay. From but, what so, I but, know. but that kind of is the idea. It's right, like, right. Yeah. Like if you're going to load your shotgun for home defense, you do <laughs> slug, shot, slug, shot, or something like that, right? Or shot, slug, whatever. Okay. Uh, and uh, what's this one here? Sharps. Sharps? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so we've just got an array of things. We say yeah. we got some buck and ball there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's this smooth one with no rings? That is uh, Enfield. Yep. Enfield. And then what is this? Uh, a one ringer? Or is that a, a deformed it's, Enfield? It's called a dance and park. Dance and park. I think that's uh, Texas. Okay. Round. Okay. That would make sense then. You're finding that on Little Round Top. And we've got caps. some percussion caps yeah. here. Some fired and unfired examples. Yeah. And so these are these are significant to archaeologists because when we find these, we can often determine um, th that there was a firing position where we find the percussion caps. So the picture where I'm in the trench, mm -hmm. um, on that original surface, we did find percussion caps. So somebody was likely um, shooting behind that rock that... Um, and and how many, do, do you find what is it like a higher concentration of them you find and that tells you um, that sometimes not always mm -hmm. um, yeah it really depends on the area but I mean you know, sometimes just we find all one or caps. two and then another time yeah and then you can also see some of them that are spread out those are the ones that were fired and right the, yeah so you would see the difference between the two. yeah the ones that look like old Oops. flower okay and then these uh, uh, must have hit <laughs> rock or something yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, look at that, and that these are these are powerful uh, images. I think though, because it really shows what happens to these soft lead bullets when it hits something hard. Mm -hmm. And um, and w I, I was doing a show the other day. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember with who or about what, but we had a picture. <laughs> we had oh, it was uh, you know Dave Malgi. No. Okay. Dave Malgi, he's a, a member of the foundation. He's on the board at the foundation. He's got an amazing collection of artifacts in his house. And um, we had him on the show the other day, Monday. And he brought some things in. And he had a grouping of uh, artifacts from a soldier. I can't remember who. But uh, they he, he carried around with him the bullet that hit him in the arm. Mm -hmm. And it and it didn't hit any bone. It's just the meaty part of the arm, um, and they extracted it. And he carried it around in a you know cap tin, <laughs> and uh, for the rest of his life. And and he has the tin and the guy's picture, mm -hmm. pre wound, post wound, with his you know shirt off, and you could see his arms wow. kind of atrophied, and mm -hmm. and uh, and he has the bullet in the tin that the guy used to carry around. And we looked at it, and I said, I said, this is amazing because it didn't hit his bone. But it's still deformed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just from hitting the muscle. Yeah. And um, now here, obviously, these hit a rock or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, that, uh, or maybe one of the monuments, maybe hit one of the monuments, possibly. Because well, that's the monuments how else? were built after the battle to oh. commemorate the battle. Oh, I thought they put the monuments there <laughs> so the regiments knew where to go. Exactly. Exactly. That's why there's so many. I yeah. do like that interpretation. That's where all the bullets are there. <laughs> you know? It's target yeah. practice. Yeah. They were shooting at the monument. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually heard Taurus say that. Uh, what is this here? These are friction primers? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, surprisingly few of those. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah we'd hope for more of those up there, but there are a few. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming from Hazlitt's battery, right? Correct. Okay, um, so they're not in exactly the right position, but we'll figure to be that Hazlitt's out. battery. Yeah, hmm. who knows how they? But get they would have gone there. flying up in the yeah. air and yeah, landed God and knows light. where. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it could go flying in the air from the explosion, and then a gust of wind comes and carries it a little further. Yeah, could be all over the place. What's this? It's the base of a shell. The base of a shell. Oh, I see. Okay. God, imagine getting hit by that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be a good day. Um, anything on the shell? How, are you seeing a, a lot of exploded uh, artillery? Quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a surprising amount, really. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. So indicating that that was probably a good target for Confederate artillery? or I think the Confederates were, were uh, hitting it pretty hard. And there's a, you know, in the limited area that we have surveyed out there, that we've, artillery shell fragments are kind of everywhere. Really? Yeah. Okay. And that Dyer shell that was found was fired? Yes, yeah. it was fired, um, but it was faulty. Right. It didn't it's explode. Uh, obviously, it didn't yeah. explode, yeah. <laughs> but the, um, how do you pronounce it? Sabo or Sabo? Sabo. 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 Yeah. 
um, seems to have been intact on there. I, I was always yeah. under the impression that they would separate um, once the projectile was in the air. Not always or not ever? Yeah. Or was I wrong um, on that? Or I don't no. think they always separate. No. We recently found some fragments of um, Sabo's out in that McMillan Woods right. area uh-huh. that appears to be from uh, Federal. From Union Artillery. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so oh, okay. uh, I think they don't always separate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. And then these are up by where the fuse would go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. More fragments there. There's a fuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What type of fuse is this? Um, uh, it's it's not a shinkle, is it? Borman. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. It. I don't know my fuses <laughs> either, so I can't help you there. Yeah. Um, let me guess what this is. Oh, this is some kind of tool. Yeah. Right. Um, what for? Like a musket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like Gun you would tool. take the nipple Gun off bridge. or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, so that's cool. So you're finding that. Hmm. Oh, this is a Jew's harp. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Oh. We found a few of those. Actually, not well, one or two up there, and then we found them yeah, elsewhere on the, yeah, on the battlefield, too. Yeah, I found some at Devil's Den. And, um, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's I so found cool. quite a few of those. Could, they could have had a band going if there. they would stop fighting. <laughs> that's right. Somebody's playing music. <laughs> this is a, uh, what, New York button? I can't make that out. It is. Yeah? It yeah. Is. Okay. Yeah, surprisingly, not a whole lot of buttons. Very few. Um, but that's a or great buttons example. that have um, any sort of distinction on them. Yeah. Huh. All right, we got <laughs> some uh, belt plates, mm-hmm. buckles, whatever, mm-hmm. from the U.S. Um, all right. Now, what the hell is that? Oh, that's a... Uh, oh, okay, so these are breast breastplates. breastplates. Both of them are breastplates. Mm-hmm. This one on the right here. Well, it's just front and back. So that's the, oh, it's the same one. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's okay. Back. Yeah. Got it. Oh, right, right, right. All right. I get it. That was actually found surprisingly at the recently after you know months and months of of work out there down near the parking lot. The, the, by <laughs> Devil's Den. No, little no, round top. Little, little round top yeah. parking lot. Huh. Maybe he lost it on his way up. <laughs> Getting them back on the Park bus. the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a cannonball here. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of. Now, so is there a reason why this is taken indoors and not out uh, on the field? Just forget to take it when you were out there? Or? Yeah. Okay, Caitlin can tell that story. Yeah, so recently I was um, visiting the Museum Services Center for our, our region here at the Park Service um, in Boston. And I was bringing some Gettysburg collections back to our park to work on. Um, and this was actually, these cannibals are from Little Round Top from a survey done a few years ago that um, had to do with a, um, a prescribed burn. Mm-hmm. Um, so archeological survey was done prior to that. Um, and so this right here, we are, trying to confirm if they are indeed solid cannonballs and these were 27 pounds they are Mm. very heavy Mm. (laughs) they look small but they are heavy uh trust me um (laughs) so we had some people come out with some x-ray equipment and um unfortunately the equipment seen in this picture here was um the portable x-ray was too small to um see through the cannonballs so they had to get some bigger equipment okay and is it solid they are solid, yes. Good, good, okay. <laughs> yeah, so they will be coming home soon. <laughs> good. All right, and now this is what we there were talking we about. This is the famous <laughs> dire shell. Famous, yeah. So how far down was that? It looks like a deep hole. It was about, I want to say 16 inches, 12, 16 inches. Okay. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe a little deeper. Yeah. And would that be, um, wait, let me think I how to word this so that I'm not sounding like an idiot. Um, <laughs> would that be the depth that you would expect it? I mean, I'm assuming that it was it was fired and it just went straight into the ground and there it sat, right? Yeah. So when you found it, were you looking at the butt end of it or what did it look like in the hole? Um, so <laughs> when this was uncovered, it wasn't exactly sure until we pulled it out of the ground what exactly um, well, right, but, that was. But, and yes, so... Yeah, at the time it was, oh, well, here's a hard piece of metal, and it's a, okay, it looks big, it looks bigger, it looks bigger. This is a shell, everybody evacuate type of thing. Right. Um, but yes, it 
here's a hard piece I, of metal. Right. Well, let me make sure. And then you bang right. it a few times with the shovel, right? <laughs> right. It's a rock. Right. Digging uh, bar. I think it's a rock. It knock, sounds knock. like metal to me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. But but was it like faced? Like, so usually you can't. Yes. Um, I believe it was. But usually you, you can't tell what things are until you pull it out. They're covered in mud. And then you clean it off. And then you realize. So it's you not have. like when you go and excavate something where you're like carefully removed. You like, know, a what, lot of times I feel that I've dug up a bullet by feeling the weight of the lead in my hands. Sure. Um, everything is covered in dirt and it's usually very clay dirt so you can't always see the artifacts after you've uncovered them until you've cleaned them off. Can people come out with you when you guys are doing digs and like see or help? No. Um, oh, if there are p- <laughs> oh, So I do train volunteers um, who have like if I if I wanted to do a video for my YouTube channel yeah. of what you guys do, yeah. we could come out and maybe yeah, you so could let me. Yeah, so visitors do come by and see us doing our job in, um, on occasion around the park when we are out and about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll have yeah, to work we'll put you to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Yeah, we've yeah. got to do that for the sake of the video. Don't expect me to actually work, but I'll, I'll <laughs> pretend, you know. But most of the, you know, this was, uh, I've heard up to two feet deep. We weren't there. When yeah, was and this was uncovered. within, this was within the construction zone. So it wasn't right. something that a visitor could walk by. And see now, most, doing our job. most of the artifacts are just a few inches deep. Yeah, so this, this one, is. Clearly, it clearly it right. achieves some depth, although it hit clay, soils, and rock. So okay. It, you know, it was, it was halted probably was pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, and then another fuse. Anything on this you want to so talk? So that's about? that's actually the fuse. Um, so once oh the from shell, the right. Yeah. So once the shell was uh, detonated, the the army came came up and um, blew it up um, based on our protocol. And so I went out there after the fact and I um, recovered what was exploded from from the shell. That's cool. Um, and so the initial it weighed. It was a 10-pound dyer, um, and I was able to recover seven and a half pounds of that material. Um, and so the inside, I got a pretty good look of how it was constructed. Um, on the inside was a sulfur matrix, which you have all the shrapnel, the tiny little iron balls on the inside, and then, of course, the lead sabo, and then this um, fuse, which was our little mystery for a while um, and what you see on the screen is we had some x-ray fluorescence done PXRF um, and to determine what type of metal the fuse was made out of because we saw the fuse once I once I dug it up afterwards and thought hey this is a a union shell with a confederate fuse in it Hmm. Um, and so we got some folks to um, confirm based on the metal content and you know the copper indeed it it is a confederate fuse all right and then oops i didn't mean to do that <laughs> oh that's the that's the end of it yep oh okay yep, those are all pieces. okay good so all right so so tell me now let me get back to the camera there so let me so tell me now about um what just personally for you guys like what what is it like to work on this particularly because it's little round top and yeah, you know I know no. you're you're 6 months uh, into it but uh, <laughs> maybe you you've you've gleaned this so far but uh, people really care about this place yeah <laughs> you know and little round top especially yeah seeing it seeing it before and doing some of the monitoring um before the initial construction started and then um getting to go out there and and actually sit in that trench and on the original surface that was that was really special. That's got to be, you know. Yeah. And even though um, we didn't, you know, dig up a, a ton of artifacts, it's not always about the artifacts. But right. It's knowing that somebody was there in that firing position behind that, you know, natural fortification of that rock, yeah. firing down slope. So. Did we know? And I mean, we, but you know, the government and all the rest <laughs> of us. Um, did we know that the 44th New York was built on Phil? Um, you know, 
Like, was that when a surprise that was, when you discovered that? That it was a surprise to find that original surface. Um, personally, and, or like, like in other words, to you, it was a surprise. It was a surprise. But was um, it a surprise to the Park Service? Did they there, know there that? There are pretty good records kept of of the um, commemorative era and all of those monuments yeah, being yeah. built. Um, so they, so th- there is a record of it. Maybe it's just lost to our memory because nobody's sitting there studying all the, the records that in depth. Or Yeah, but I think it, the other thing that it raises is is that particular episode is, is this idea that there can be preserved features like that out mm-hmm. there you yeah. know, after 160 years. And to me, that's one of the most exciting things. Archaeology is really kind of I sort of picked up, if you will, in the last few years on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. A lot of the archaeology that's been done here for decades has been that uh, sort of domestic farmstead archaeology, which is important and it's really cool. A lot of those farmsteads were occupied well before the war, uh, so there's a long record of, of uh, occupation there. And of course, they were present during the battle too. But a lot of the archaeology focused on those. Right. In the last few years, we've been doing a little more archaeology out on the battlefield itself. And so, as you know, uh, we have lots of historic accounts of the battle. But what's in the ground? What remains in the ground? Mm. And and some might think not much, you know, because the battlefield was heavily scoured immediately after the war. And it's been 160 years. Uh, but th- we're beginning to take a look. And it's, it's sort of a, a light sample of what's out there. But we're beginning to take a look at what's there. We've done it now at Little Round Top. Mm-hmm. Culp's Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing a little project out at McMillan Woods. Mm-hmm. Devil's, Devil's Den. Den. What are you doing at McMillan Woods? Um, so we are just doing a, a survey, the area of the campground, the horse trail, and that woods area, just to get an idea of the archaeological resources um, that are present. And are you finding anything interesting? Well, we can confirm that there were indeed Boy Scouts in the campground who <laughs> a bunch. lost they a lot, a lot of, of their tents. neckerchief. <laughs> those uh, those little pins. brass uh, uh, sliders. slider yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost mine all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, lots of change. Um, <laughs> More tent stakes than you can knives. imagine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really? A little Boy Scout pocket knives? <laughs> oh, somebody's, yeah. Somebody's class ring from 2013. 13, yeah. Oh, so recently lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you lost your 2013 class and ring. And your name is Matt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be me. Yeah. It's my well, class ring. What school did you go to? The, 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 the one with the ring on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what school was it? I don't remember. Oh, it does have a school name on it. It's somewhere it in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's yeah. where I went. Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, High Pennsylvania High School. Pennsylvania High School. That's yeah. where I went. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with a, it has a little a Boy Scout um, insignia on it. So, okay, so we have confirmed that the Boy Scout camp has had Boy Scouts in it. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. right. That's good to know. Uh-huh, and the uh, horse trail did have horses on it. And they dropped a lot of change. <laughs> they did. They did drop they a lot of change. They lost a lot of money there. <laughs> And the horses, uh, you're finding a lot of horseshoes. Horseshoes on the horse trail. Yeah. And battlefield related artifacts on the horse trail. Right. I would imagine you'd find a lot of shell fragments in that area, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah we, have. Uh, we, we have, you know, there are features out there mm-hmm. um, the breastworks and the rifle mm-hmm. pits. And, you know, a lot of those are, are rebuilt when you see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in, when you get off of sort of the beaten path or sort of on the edges of the battlefield, they're not necessarily rebuilt. So you're talking about they're across rebuilt. from like the McMillan House, those uh, breastworks there? Uh, a little uh, further down yeah. the road. Yeah, okay. the actual campground. Yeah. Okay. All right. Out Back in the, in the woods. woods? Okay. Yeah. So that's why I haven't seen them yet. But that would be a continuation of those. Well, I mean, the whole thing was yeah. breastworks. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I had another question for you, and it was a doozy. <laughs> Damn. Oh, Culp's Hill. You mentioned Culp's Hill. Were you part of Culp? Well, you, I was you not. Weren't I here. Um, here I you. was, I caught the tail end. Okay. Yeah. So what was that like? It was, I remember going up there one time and you had all the little flags in the ground that indicated where bolts were found, mm-hmm. I believe. And the most impressive to me was the ones on the face of the breastworks. Mm-hmm. Because, you know. Right. So that was a project to determine whether or not those breastworks, um, similar to McMillan, the Traverse, yes, um, 
to see if they were reconstructed or if they were intact from the battle era. So those um, were intact. Then. Yes, yes, they were. It was that's very pretty exciting. neat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I caught the tail end of that project. So another thing that I had done up there is um, we're doing a breastwork, a long-term breastwork monitoring project um, that'll um, continue for decades to come, and we were able to. Um, insert survey markers to um, help us try and learn how uh, over time the landscape shifts um, and those how that affects the breastworks. Go into that a little bit more. What does that mean? Right. So um, we want to see do the over time what gets buried, what sinks, what you know rises with the the natural just change that happens on the battlefield over time and so we have little survey markers that were placed in several of the Culps Hill breastworks and every two years I believe it's two years we will go out there with the total station and measure the depth and um, the location of those survey mar markers and so okay. it's it just happened we haven't even gotten our, our second measurements yet but over time we should be able to see you know the record of the depth of those um markers in the breastworks and hmm. yeah so more to come on that it's it's new research so it's it'll be fascinating though how you, how archaeology you know works and how yeah. they figure these things out yeah. and the things they do to monitor stuff and, yeah yeah so um there a, a long time ago there were two shows i remember i think it was oh, what was it called was it history detectives have you heard of that show do you remember that mm -hmm. heard of it mm -hmm. i think it was something like that and um they did one on little bighorn uh -huh. and okay. they did one on pickett's charge okay and they used uh battlefield archaeology you know to trace the path of soldiers and and answer certain questions and you know the pickett's charge one kind of felt a little hokey to me but the little bighorn one was pretty neat mm -hmm. um do little, we little bighorn is that's where battlefield archaeology in north america basically began oh really yeah They've been doing that for decades out there. Why there? That's just where it, there's a fellow, named, an archaeologist named Doug Scott, and he worked with the Park Service and for years and years developed sort of the techniques to systematically sample uh, the artifacts that were left behind, as well as study graves, uh, because the graves have been sort of shifted around out there. Grave markers have been shifted around, okay. kind of unreliable. But he began to really developed that technique for analyzing uh, positions of troops, positions of the Native Americans based on distribution of, of artifacts. Right. So he, he sort of pioneered what we call battlefield archaeology today. Okay. Decades ago. Yeah, and I, I, that name sounds really familiar. I wonder if he was one of the guys in the, those episodes. Hmm. Might have been. Is it dark hair? I don't know. He's older now. Well, yeah, but back yeah, 20 but, something years ago, he would have yeah. had dark hair, maybe. maybe. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, so anyway, is there is there is um, is it possible, I guess? I, I'm sure there are no plans to do anything like this, but is it possible that if there is some big question that ever comes up about the Battle of Gettysburg, that the park would use archaeology to figure it out? Absolutely. Yeah. I think so. I mean, that's kind of little round top is, is sort of headed that way. The mm -hmm. data is very preliminary and we have this data now. There was actually data generated in 2021, mm -hmm. smaller set, mm -hmm. and then 2018. 18. That's where those yep. cannonballs came from. Uh -huh. So when we put all this together, you know, there may be some questions about um, artillery, the use of artillery there, um, sort of your your battle lines, if you will. How far did the Confederates get up up slope? Uh, where was that line between Chamberlain and and the Alabama forces? Um, and you know, there's there's certain questions that could be addressed with that data, and and that could be expanded or applied anywhere on the battlefield. But the other thing to consider is, uh, you know, we manage the landscape because it's so important mm. and so special, right? Um, but we tend to think of it surficially, not subsurface. -like. Right. So, you know, sort of adding into that, that idea of what we're managing out there, what's below the ground. 
and I think that's kind of the direction we're headed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so uh, back to the uh, 40th New York, 44th New York. Mm-hmm. I keep, yeah, 40th is down in the valley. That's the Mozart Regiment that is yeah. being drowned by the beavers. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so the uh, th- that that monument there being on Phil, and you discover the original surface of Little Round Top in that r- section of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there any other um, discoveries along those lines that you've made? I'm thinking of one. Let's see if you're thinking of it. <laughs> I think the Traverse comes to mind, but. I don't know. But that, that over on Culp's Hill? Yeah. Did, well, yeah. Okay, so you mentioned the Traverse before, so this is your second time I mentioned. Did you guys find anything? What did you find about the Traverse? That it was intact? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. By intact, you mean? It was original um, to, and not never been con- reconstructed. Um, so it is the original Traverse? The original and, Traverse. And where exactly would people find that if they were to go and look to see where the Traverse was? You can't, I mean, you can't tell with the naked eye, right? You can. It's a, yeah. It's right next, close to the road, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, where in the road? Where are we talking? So somebody's listening to this right now and they happen to have just pulled on Call Grove Avenue and they're like, oh, well, we're going up to Culp's Hill right now and they're talking about the Traverse. Let's pull over at the spot that Caitlin or Jeff tells us to pull over Caitlin's right after Google it right Caitlin now. stops uh-huh. Googling it. Is it by the 137th um, Yeah, so New York? I'm terrible at all the names of the streets here, so hang on one second. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and Colgrove isn't where isn't on Culp's Hill, but it, it's the one that goes off of Baltimore Pike, right? That takes you up to it eventually. But I, so is is the tra- I was always told the Traverse is by that boulder that has the 14th Brooklyn's um, a little plaque on it. It's their, like one of their other markers, um, uh, uh, basically across from the Geary statue, I'm and gonna, uh, to the right of the 137th New York. Yeah, Caitlin's shaking her yeah. head. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, Cole Grove, and then and it would intersect Williams. with the breastworks, Slipa. right? So basically, making a T. Yes. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Right. And would this have been a trench, or would it have just been another set of breastworks? It's breastworks, right? Yeah, breastworks. So they would have they would have made breastworks that um, would 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 intersect with the main line of breastworks, so that you could safely move men and supplies in and out of the the breastworks. That that's the idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there wouldn't have been a trench. So there'd be there'd be no depression in the ground anybody could look at. But you don't see a a, a hump, do you? You do. You do. You, you do, do. Actually, you can go out so there. So now I'm going to have to go out there. You, yeah. It is. It is really cool. You can see it right on, along the the wood line. Um, it's about a foot, two feet maybe, and you can see where they piled the dirt up. Um, well, you could. See, that's the main the line of breastworks. Work. Right. I'm talking can, about the traverse. Where would I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you you can see that. Um, okay. It is along there as well. I'll have to look closer then. I didn't look close enough. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but how about on Little Round Top? Any other discoveries that uh, you know, like the original surface? How about the around the ninetieth uh, PA? Is that that monument that's up there? The Pennsylvania ninety first. Ninety first. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I know I get in the right decade. Yeah, it's just got the right state. Which one? And the right state. There used to be uh, kind of an observation gathering point up there with a retaining wall. That's gone. Mm-hmm. And what did you discover mm-hmm. under that? There's a, a boulder. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to make I didn't mean to make you feel like you're in school being quizzed. On something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there's a boulder that was covered up by the construction of this observation deck, um, ish area. Right. And um, now that's exposed, and you're going to keep it exposed, right. and build a path around it, mm-hmm. make the path kind of go around it, and that's what I was talking about before with the um, flexibility. You know, oh, as, yeah. as you're discovering things, yeah. you're adjusting. Yeah, yeah, that's been pretty impressive. You know, the team goes that has gone out there on a regular basis, as Steve, I'm sure, told you, and made adjustments like that mm-hmm. working with the contractor. In fact, they put some fill in there, and we actually asked them to pull some of that fill back out nice. because it was a little excessive. We thought a little too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the 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 walls, the stone walls on Little Round Top, 
uh, you know, the one over um, that either over over by the Fourth New York used to have a. Sorry, 44th New York it used to have a, a, well, I'm sure it's going to be there again, but there's a, a wayside there and it has a photograph mm-hmm. of the breastworks there post battle. And when you look at it and then compare it to what you see with the naked eye, you're like, well, I recognize the boulder they're built around, but mm-hmm. the breastworks themselves look uh, horrendous because people would just climb on them and, and knock them over and the rocks would be scattered everywhere. But the the crew's been, and they did this at the 20th Main Line too, uh, they've been reconstructing the stone walls and they look great. Yeah, they look fantastic. And, and they really do, and I hope people don't go climbing on them and ruining them again because they really do, they stand out now. Yeah. You know, and it, and it's a, and especially walking in front of the 44th New York um, on the the new old ground and with the reconstructed walls there, it um, it was a completely different view of the area, just a different feel of that area. Yeah, with all the vegetation gone too. Oh, that right. helps a lot. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a breastwork right below the 91st Pennsylvania that was, as I understand, largely. Obscured. Not visible. Yes. And well, now it's, it's you know, that, that one's in relatively poor condition. Yes. It needs to be rebuilt. But I remember, uh, you're right, because we were standing there and I remember there's the retaining wall on the, on the south side of the monument. And I go, did they just build this? Or And he's like, no, it's always been there. And I'm like, why does it not look familiar to me? And he goes, well, it's probably covered in vegetation. And I couldn't tell you because I don't remember. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember what it looked yeah. like there. Yeah. I never no, looked at that so specific different. spot, you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's going to be really neat. And uh, I think people are going to like it. It's it's gonna, it's gonna not the big scary threat that a lot of people thought it would be. No, I don't no. think people are going to love it. Yeah. Once it's done. Yeah, and you look at... You look at um, pictures that were taken around the time of the battle without all that vegetation there, and you compare it to the vegetation that has been removed, and um, you it's just so much clearer. You can yeah. see, you know, I think we what should, would have been seen. We should salt the earth around that area just so we don't have to worry about, you know, clearing stuff and <laughs> just salt the earth and it won't grow. I mean, it'll be kind of, you know, barren looking, but, but whatever, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's about, you know, seeing things. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, guys, thank you very much for coming on. Jeff Irwin and Caitlin Ball. Jeff, again, is the Cultural Resources Program Manager, and Caitlin is the Park Archaeologist, or as we like to call her, the Parkeologist. I hope you coined that phrase. Bring it back to work with you and let <laughs> everybody will. start referring to you as that. <laughs> new business cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. some new ones made. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming on. Sure, it was really nice course. talking to you. And maybe we'll have you come on uh, periodically as things sure. Progress and you find other stuff because uh, yeah, I think people are really too. interested in the archaeology at the park. Yeah, and um, uh, it's not something you hear enough about. So as long as you guys are willing to come talk about it, we'll have you on. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, sure. great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you all for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. All right. Thank you. All right. Cool, guys. <laughs>